Uh, welcome to the CES meeting. It's November 9th of 2022, and our agenda is light today, but yesterday at the module's Harmony call, Yulia presented uh, deferred execution of modules, and I will not be able to do justice to the presentation that she provided, but you may recall the presentation that she last gave about the topic at plenary, um, allowing, uh, allowing me to wave my hands a little bit. Um, the idea is motivated. So let's start with the motivation. The motivation is that there are many code bases that are currently stuck on common JS because they cannot move to ESM without suffering a performance penalty for the execution time of conditionally needed, uh, conditional runtime conditionally needed dependencies. Um, and the only obvious mitigation today is that anything that depends on conditionally executed dependencies has to be async today because it, because uh, the viral contagion of an async dynamic import is involved. And that is intractable, intractable um, because currently it's sufficient in the common JS scenario to say to defer the require call conditionally, which allows the code to be loaded but not executed until it's actually needed. Um, when Yulia last presented this to Plenary, the proposal- Wait, wait, wait. hold, hold on. The um, defer, making the require conditional doesn't load the code before it's needed. It only loads and executes the code if it's needed, right? I mean, if you don't, if you, if, if you don't call, if you don't make the required call, you don't load the code. Um, that is true on Node because Node has a synchronous implementation of the module loader. But require um, when require when common JS is used in on the web, it must be bundled, and because okay. it's bundled, we're using heuristic static analysis of require calls in order to load anything that can be loaded Got it. time and conditionally executing it at runtime. Okay. Um, which, which is as designed, it was intended to be used that way and Node just did its own thing for its own reasons. Um, the, uh, so the upshot of it is that, the, uh, that Mozilla is using this um, internally to their engine and they are using a synchronous file system and they are moving to ESM with an, a sync with a, synchronous implementation of ESM's module loader. Um, and, th and their use cases is, is, is provided for, they found a way out. Um, but uh, they, uh, Yulia is hoping to, ex to propose a, a more general solution for ESM. And that is that they are tentatively calling this deferred execution. And in the previous rendition of the proposal, this is an extension to ESM, such that there would be a read barrier for any of the imported lexical names of um, a, a, laser, a, defer, a deferred execution module, such that the body of the of the body of the deferred module will be executed at the time of the first read of anything that it provides. Um, That's and, re re entrancy hazard. I mean, then you're. You're, you're reading a variable and you're causing a module execution during the read of the variable. Yes. Yeah. Um, and that is the feedback that Yulia recalls from the last meeting and has a clever um, restriction that she intends to propose to, the, uh, to this that such that it would, uh, uh, instead of having a read barrier, read barrier on a lexically named binding, um, Deferred uh, to defer the execution of module, you would have to receive a lazy namespace object, a proxy for the namespace object, for a proxy for the subset of the namespace that you select to import, um, such that every, uh, such that the deferred execution still has reentrancy, but syntactically, it's obvious that reentrancy re is possible because there will be a dot. Um, so the idea is that oh. you would get this lazy namespace object and say, 
namespace dot name and the first time any of those names are accessed through property access that causes the execution of the uh, the deferred module body on your stack um and so the things that i brought up at wow. yesterday's meeting were that this introduces some interesting side effects one of which is that um if an error is thrown by the execution of the body of the deferred the, the deferred module um that the uh that the deferred module would be obliged to capture some stack frames from the the first lazy execution module that accessed a property of that deferred of the deferred module um and that is no different than common js and we survived that today so um there so, are so state the state the exception semantics again so there are a number of possibilities for it um one possibility is that the exception includes stack frames from the importing module and those would be leaked to any other module that does a dynamic import of it um uh, another possibility is that the 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 exceptions stack trace gets truncated at the at the base of the execution of the module and so then the only observable effect is that the mod that the deferred the deferred module has a smaller stack to work with I'm sorry are, are there is is the only exception issue the co the confidentiality leak of the content of stack frames because <clears throat> the um i mean in in general you know with with within a you know there's there's still the ongoing issue about what do we want to do at realm boundaries with regard to stacks trace privacy but within a realm there is no stack trace privacy mm -hmm. and uh uh until you turn on lockdown and uh on lockdown we got we we need to specify what it is we've implemented uh, i, I um, think it's is uh whether a module uh being imported like that should be able to sense uh which uh other which path caused the import it can't sense it if it can't see the stack trace and it can't see the stack trace after lockdown and if you're not locking it down stack traces leak yeah. information all over the place every uh, anyway Correct. that that breaks all constraints on observability Currently, the uh, the top level module evaluation is on a clean stack always, whether that's through dynamic uh, imports or static imports. Obviously, okay. Uh, but, that, but but the, but the 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 reason that that's important is um, is isolation of side effects. Yes. Um, uh, in other words, the whole the whole protection against um, uh, reentrancy uh, attacks. Um, the that's the thing to focus on. The 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 make stack trace is making it visible. What you're making visible is that you're in a fatal situation. The problem is that you're in a fatal situation, not that you've made it visible. Yes. So the so I believe my concerns regarding exceptions are fully addressable, and there are many ways to address it. I think it's acceptable to leak. I think it's acceptable to leak, and in fact, desirable to leak the the importing module stack frames because that might be useful for diagnosis of hey why did that thing break <laughs> um but uh but yeah the re-entrancy issue is uh, and whether def what the question is for mark that i can't answer <laughs> is uh does limiting re-entrancy to um occur on the dot of uh, on on accessing the property of a lazy namespace object sufficient to assuage concerns about reentrancy in general i'd like to understand what the reentrancy issue is because the module being evaluated can only have access to what's in the global and cause reentrancy through uh through anything on the global because every everything else by definition would have to be lazily loaded with it Though there are other global side effects like logging the, and such. 
Yes, I, I understand, but uh, any re-entrancy would have to come through, uh, through global access, as far as I understand. Um, when, when you've, in the absence of laziness, um, uh, uh, and, and in the absence of cycles, modules initialize in a bottom-up order by the import graph. Um, for if, if lazy module A imports module B, when does module B get evaluated? Uh, I assume just before uh, module A gets evaluated. If module A's evaluation is deferred, Correct. is the implied evaluation of, of, of module B also deferred? Yes, the whole subgraph. I believe the whole subgraph would be evaluated uh, following the same constraints as today, but during that lazy evaluation. And in okay. fairness, Yulia has investigated this very thoroughly um, the, and, has, and has very specific plans about how to address things like, what if one of those modules has top level of weight and, and such? Okay, uh, so, yeah. here's another, so here's another potential stateful coupling that can lead to, lead to re-entrancy problems, which is um, uh, module A and B both import module C. Uh, uh, module B is deferred. Um, uh, so uh, A and C are all evaluated before um, uh, B is loaded. Um, I'm sorry, before B is evaluated. Uh, then within, um, you know, with, within a turn, within, with, while there's a stack going on, while something might be going on with the state of C, um, somebody now initiates um, uh, a, um, uh, the, de the deferred evaluation of B. So deferred evaluation of B is happening while C is active. Uh, B by importing C has access to C synchronously during this time, That's, that can be um, stateful interference on the state of C. So, so basically, the the the, um, the property of imports that two imports of the same thing give you the same stateful instance gives you another source of of effectively global coupling. So, and you're saying this can uh, this can happen today with cycles, which may be outside of B's control. So with cycles, the, the, the stateful interference problem with cycles is, 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 well, yeah, is well understood. And it's, I mean, the, the problem, but, but a cycle, you know, everything in the cycle has to participate in the cycle for there to be a cycle. And, um, and must do so voluntarily. Right. Yeah. So the question is, um, does, introduce, does introducing deferred execution oh, oh, hold on. interference? To get back to this, uh, to this example, um, if, if C is on the stack and the, and the laziness is caused by A lazy importing B, that means C has called into a function of A that causes the laziness to trigger. So in the first place, C already opened itself to uh, re-entrancy by A. How, I'm sorry, how did C open itself to re-entrancy? It, it because it had to call a function in, in A uh, that would cause the, the oh, laziness. Oh, 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 right, 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 I see. Uh... Like yeah, either. I don't think that aggravates what we have right now. So I think it's coherent. Um, I think they they won me over when Julia was explaining a reality of the situation where you want to 
use the lazy by the lazy require the next turn um, because you use import as a promise based API to initialize the lazy module and that requires significant changes across the board. Uh, I think I understand that. I, I'm sympathetic with that point of view. And so this synchronous manner of initialization seems to be um, uh, a lot easier for developers to modify their code, make some of the pieces of the program to, to be lazy and still not having to change everything. I mean, it, it, it might be that it's, that um, it, it might be easier when it works, but still be um, fatally indefensible. So, so, you know, let me acknowledge that when it works, I'm sure it's easier, uh, but that doesn't, that doesn't resolve the hazard issue. Can you elaborate more on the hazard issue? Well, so this is the first I'm really trying to think it through. And this answer that, that uh, Chris just gave about, or was it Matthew? Matthew just gave about uh, in order for the, for in, in the diamond import case, in order for the, the, the particular case I was worried about to be a problem, you would have to have C calling out to A, which, um, uh, that seems right. So I don't have it thought through. There might, it might be okay, but I'm certainly um, have no confidence at this point that uh, that it's okay. And it's it certainly seems like a very very dangerous area. You're you're losing all of the simple reasoning about isolation of. Um, of acyclic um, module initialization. I'm going to attempt for the record to draw the scenario that you've described. Um, that's A, A is doing taking a strong dependency on, I'm sorry, can you just read it off to me? The, the, the A's, B's and C's relationships to each other? Yeah. Um... Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add one more party so we have the full diamond. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we've got an initial module uh, I I for initial that uh, imports A and lazy imports B. By the way, who says that the import is lazy? Is it the importer or the importee? The importer decides. Okay. So I imports A and I lazy imports B. Um, A imports C and B imports C. And then the, the remaining question, which is where this delicate um, defense may or may not work, is what is the problematic thing that happens that triggers the evaluation of B? And can that happen with C frames on the stack without there having, without there being any further imports beyond the state, the ones that we've stated here? And I think the answer is yes, because the callout is not via a cyclic import. And if the callout is not via cyclic import and it's, cause, and it's causing something other than separated bottom-up evaluation, uh, then it is violating a, 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 a state separation constraint. Right, a callout is not a cyclic import. A callout is just a runtime uh, uh, runtime interaction. So, so the only way the only way 
any other module that is not uh, uh, um, the initializ initialization module, the only way you have to trigger B is by going through A, to, to, uh, through uh, I in this case. The only I can do that, trigger yeah. that. But I could, uh, I after importing A could pass to A, a closure created by I, which A calls, uh, and then during the call from A, or that, you know, or that, that in fact, it could be passed through A to C. So C um, uh, calls a closure callback created by I, and then the um, evaluation of B is triggered by the callback. Right. I, it doesn't even need to be the callback. It could be that you actually give the proxy object to the other. Uh, it's, a, it's a namespace object, special namespace object called proxy namespace. Yeah. But let, but let's, but, they can call it directly, but still is um, the, the master puppet here is I. Right. But the, so, so, so the reason I want to focus on the callback case uh, is um, it is to, to focus on the case where it was unintentional. Um, that um, that I was just you know providing a callback that happened to access this property in the namespace object, and C was just calling a callback provided by you know provided to it, not knowing that it was causing a deferred execution. In execution, an evaluation of the module is any other JavaScript execution at that point. You're calling a function that can do whatever it wants, including eval. Uh, but it can't cause the evaluation of a, yeah, in a non-cyclic import graph under ESM, the callback cannot cause the evaluation of the top level of a module during the callback. I understand but that that is only relevant to the top level of that module. It, uh, it doesn't affect the, the caller. It only affects the callee. I'm sorry, speak in terms of A, B, C, I, A, B, C, and D. It, it only affects B's execution. Uh, the, B can sense indeed that it was uh, called with a stack, uh, but it at the end of the day from uh, C's point of view uh, or what, whoever else's point of view is, is just uh, another function call, another evaluation that happens behind a function call. No, but the thing is, B has access to, to C's exports because B also imported C. Sure. So, so during, 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 B, during B's evaluation, uh, which might happen during C's evaluation, uh, it can now make calls into C's exports that now happen within a um, uh, within it, it it can happen during C's evaluation. It, it cannot happen during initialization because C was already initialized. No, no, my point. I I'm not talking about C's in eval. I'm not talking about C's evaluation. I'm talking about reentrancy on C's state at runtime. By ver a, a surprising reentrancy that would not have happened if B had been loaded eagerly. If B is loaded eagerly, then anything that B does to C's state during B's initial during B's evaluation happens. Um, but not from not after A's um. I think I think I get it. I think I I think I get what you're saying. Um, you're doing something in C, and that causes a synchronous evaluation of a module, and that otherwise was it's not possible in any right. scenario. It's not possible today to see that. But uh, I think Julia convinced me yesterday during the meeting. Uh, and again, I'm 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 only 
spending like I'll say a couple of hours thinking about this. Um, the uh, she convinced me that uh, first this is not different from uh, B. I mean, it's not different. Sure. So I yeah. some some evolve. So you're doing evolve like directly directly about or something like that. Or you have already good that might have side effects of some kind. Um, uh, another example that you use is like you just have a object that has properties on it and you're accessing those properties, whether those are accessors or it is a proxy or something and something is happening when you access a the property. There is already a, 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 a intuition about you accessing a property out of an object and having a side effect that occur because you're accessing that property. Um, so it, 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 there's yeah the the, the the that the the fact that the side effect happens during the that side effects happen during dot, I agree that that's not a problem because it's already the case that side effects happen during dot. Um, but but C used to be, you know, C as imported, right? Uh, a, B, and C. None of them said anything about being lazy. They, they were all coded under normal ESM assumptions about the protection of side effects from each other. Um, uh, when code in C calls a callback, um, But you, you just deferred the problem to I. I. I must have given away to A to reach into B somehow through a met, uh, through a function call, right? Uh, and and I mean, at some point you're you're just ex you just have to rely on on something you don't control and you haven't written to open that up. And if you have written everything, you you are aware of uh, of okay. this. Okay, so I'm I'm certainly not concerned about the case where you've written everything and you've thought about everything simultaneously. If you're omniscient, then nothing's a hazard because because you know what you're doing, you're not attacking yourself. Um, the, you know, all of the cases, not just from a security point of view, but from a modularity and bug point of view, are where you know, different part pieces of code were coded under different assumptions that would normally hold. And then um, uh, the, th those, those assumptions uh, can be broken by someone who should not have been in a position to break them, or by someone who engaged in a pattern that should not have broken assumptions but did. So, what I'm saying here is for C to expose itself to a reentrancy into C, and it, it must be calling out to something uh, that is not under its control. Uh, and that is a uh, function in I. That function in I could have imported C directly and re uh, and, and done a reentrant call in C uh, on, on its own. It, it doesn't need to do anything lazy if will be for that. Like, I-, I Okay, okay, okay. That, that's, that's all true. Yeah. Um, if, if you so, eliminate, I think, Mark, what you were saying, if you eliminate I from the picture, there is no I, then, C will never really be able to do anything on B. Like it doesn't know about B at all, right? It has to go through something that allows it to see there is something there that's B that is doing something. So it, it, yeah, something has to Okay, so, so I'm not at all convinced that the particular scenario that I'm sketching out here leads to a problem. What I am convinced of is that I'm very, very far from being convinced that no problem is possible because this is the, I no longer have a, an ability to reason simply about separation of state. So even if I'm not able to generate a counterexample quickly, I, it's, you know, I, I need to understand how to reason in the abstract to be confident that it's impossible to generate a counterexample. I think I'm in the same boat. I think I'm still far from really um, understand all these. Um, uh, 
at first glance, I, I even question whether or not we should have either a more low level API or a more generic API um, that allow you to control, because this is really just a mechanism that allows you to execute a module synchronously. That's all it is. All the other syntax and all that is just for that. It's just for that to be able to happen. Uh, and this, it, it might be that a more low level API can be used by some of the other um, mechanisms that we're putting in place with the layer one, zero and so on, that we might allow you to, to emulate this and do this if you want to do lazy of any kind. Uh, so I'm not sure. Uh, alternative, we can have a, 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 a more uh, generic API that just simply allow you to say, I, I, I want to uh, evaluate this right now. I don't want to wait. I already have it ready. Uh, somehow a module interns or, or some sort or something. So yeah, I'm still far away from also I agree on everything here because I cannot reason in about all the, the cases, but um, at first glance, it looks like they might be up to something. Let's um, let's try to give a fair shake to attempting to find an example, and the criteria of the of of the of the example would be a module or set of modules that are authored in isolation coherently for that establish a plan for their execution such that the introduction of another module that lazy, lazily depends on one or any of them uh, can interfere with their plan. Okay, good. That I think that 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 uh, that is an accurate representation of the kind of case that I'm worried about. Um, and so I don't think that we've run this particular case to ground yet. So let's, um, can I have some help filling out uh, at least a hypothetical direction we can go in that is likely to cause, uh, likely to cause a plan interference. I think that, uh, Matthew, you were suggesting that c.js would provide an API with a callback. Yeah. So yeah, that's the only way I can imagine anything. OK. Um, so we need to take a callback that needs to be executed, and it probably needs to have another export uh, that also interfere with some shared states between those two things. Um, and that export expect to not be called. I'm sorry, export another thing. Um, yeah. I, I, I naming uh, <laughs> uh, can be parameterless, and they would both close over uh, a local variable. I assume. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, and we're gonna do something like null equals. <laughs> The, the 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 part where I don't follow is um, anyone would be able outside of the set of trusted uh, of authority together module would be able to import call me. Um, so I, I I can't I can't imagine something further here. Um, so maybe maybe this promise is flawed already. And, and and the attack surface would be something of different shape. Um, well, let's let's run this to ground a little bit. Uh, so the, the premise here is that CJS is providing an API and this is somehow, presumably through the A route, getting into the hands of I, is that right? I assume. Um... So we're importing call me and thing, maybe. And then export call. Uh, from CGS. Sorry. I'm sorry? 
Oh. From CGS. And okay. Yeah. So So this is taking a callback and then calling, calling me with callback. Okay, so over in i.js importing call me later, maybe from, uh, and then call me later, maybe with a callback. And we're doing something in here, um, which I think has to come in from the other side, which was the import. Um, so often b.js. Yeah, b would import um, a thing from c, I guess. Mm -hmm. Exporting. Um, Call me back. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. I think so. Um, well, let's uh, let's make that interesting by having thing return state. And maybe this increment is actually beside the point. Let me clarify something about the goals here. The goal is not it's not laziness. Laziness is a, is a means to, is what is a possible means to the goal. The goal is um, to be able to do synchronous conditional import, where the condition depends on data from earlier in the same synchronous execution. Is that correct? Mm. Yes. Okay. So, so okay. So good. I'm glad. Just I'm glad to clarify that. After we uh, let's continue with the investigation you and Matthew are doing here, but at, but after that, I have a, a different angle I want to take on the problem. Okay. Yeah, like an alternate approach to solving the same thing that might obviate the need for this. That you're right. That's 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 a solves the motivating problem without laziness. Yeah. Um, okay. So call me later, maybe um, is providing a callback. And then we want that callback to and then what this means is that b.js executes here. Yeah. Uh, oh, right. No, it's it's not it's not exactly this. Um, into uh, B. So that's so now we have the now we have the read barrier. By the way. Uh, discussion yesterday was that you can have a freestanding identifier uh, cause side effects by just installing a getter uh, on the global disk. Yeah. Yeah, so we're projecting an invariant that we might not actually have, but. <laughs> the, I think Nicole's point was that um, Currently, any identifier that is actually declared, uh, module identifiers uh, are actually declared uh, and they're uh, guaranteed to be uh, 
um, to be safe. So it, it's it's only identifiers that are not declared in the local uh, file that uh, that may be producing right. side. Yeah, so only free variables have that particular hazard. Any and lexically bound imports do not have that. Yeah, do not have that hazard yet. All right, so um, tell me more about how this might break an invariant established by the plans of CJS. So BJS is executing here. BJS well, not... The, the whole setup here, I think, um, is probably flawed because anybody couldn't import B or C or um, and so on and 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 call uh, and and perform those 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 calls in the first place without any lazy import. So, um, I, I I don't know. I I, I... Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't see it either. Not from this particular scenario. Let's uh, let's pop the stack and talk to Mark about alternative approaches. Yeah. Um, so the the static import that we've that we've talked about, where or or equivalently the the you know module expression, where you get a static module object. As a as a first class runtime value, uh, that has not caused any evaluation, so you haven't done any of the evaluation that you're trying to avoid. So let me first of all uh, uh, make sure that that I'm, I'm understanding the motivating problem correctly. Uh, in order to have the static module record, um, you have to have loaded the you know the module uh, so the fact that the loading has to happen ahead of time is not what we're trying to avoid correct that is correct okay because deferred execution of course won't won't postpone the loading either yes okay. and and yulia cited figures that showed that the the cases that did not perform well enough through the translation from common JS to ESM were cases where the time spent uh, the sp time spent loading is negligible. They were loading directly off of SSD. The time spent parsing was about half. And the time spent executing was about half. And that was significant enough that um, deferring the execution of things that are not needed, uh, that are not necessarily needed at runtime um is basically a 2x speed up even though okay. they haven't gotten rid of the load okay so let me let me understand something else about our current proposals without making any accommodation for deferred execution in the third party static module record um uh there's some kind of evaluation call yes yeah and that evaluation call um evaluates synchronously evaluates the module top level synchronously during the call is that correct it's not synchronous though. for you to force the evaluation you have to call in for in our proposal. The third party module record, mm -hmm. what, is its AP, what is its API? Uh, tentatively, and this is likely to change, uh, it's new module source. Um, oh no, it isn't even necessarily that. It is the import hook returns an object that implements um, a, uh, that provides a bindings array and an evaluator execute function that receives um, an internal view of the modules, module rec, uh, mod, uh, mod, module names, the internal module scope. Uh, I forget what I called it. Um, 
in any case, it's a, an object that represents the internal names of all of the values that are imported or exported by that module through its bindings. But there's also an explicit part of the API. There's a method on the third party static module for. Yes, that executes, that initializes, it either initializes, executes, or both the body of the module. And that, and so if you have this, the third party static module object and you call that, does the initialization of the top level of the module happen during that call? Um, you are not in a, okay, so uh, you could do that. But you would have to come with you would have to have your own copy of the environment record or the the module and in, in, import namespace, um, uh, and the only way to obtain that at the moment is by implementing this particular method, and it will be called on an empty stack by the dynamic by the by the machinery underneath dynamic import. Okay. Okay, so good. That that means that that we've not already compromised the reentrancy that we're trying to defend here. Good. Okay, so in that case, go, going back to my main thread here. Um, so, um, so if we could, so okay. So the so the um, static module record is itself a first class runtime value uh, if if we could Before, okay, let's take our let's take our diamond case again without any without any deferring here. Uh, let's say during the um, uh, no, let's not take the diamond case. Let's do something else. Let's um, have a uh, I imports a. And A imports C. Let's just make a new diagram. Don't 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 overwrite yeah. that diagram. Um, I imports A. A imports C. Uh, I also imports B, and B imports D. Did I did I hear you correctly? I gets yeah. A. A gets C. I gets B. B gets D. You you had it correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, during the okay, I think I, I'm not make I'm not able to form a concrete a, a, a end to end coherent thought yet, but. The basic idea is if early in the execution, something provides a static module record as a runtime value, such that later in the execution, um, uh, either something, um, you know, when something imports some special name like B importing D, um, that what, what it, it, that it somehow it's already been determined that what D means when B imports D is the static module record that had already been determined during the evaluation of A or C or something. Probably C is completely unnecessary. You can just say during the execution of A, the, the, the correspondence between D and a particular static module record gets established so that by the time B imports D, um, uh, it, which static module D, the name D designates was determined by A. Mm -hmm. but, but they will have no way to 
trigger the synchronously, right? And I'm 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 restricting. I'm 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 speaking specifically about the synchronous scenario. Right, but the, 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 the question is, how can you do, unless we have, a, I don't think we talk about yesterday about, about a syntax or a API, not a syntax, an API that allows you to do this with module intents. So I'm, I'm, I'm not, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm saying this, is, well, first of all, um, could we do this with the, in the API that, you know, the low level, um, you know, module loader API that 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 we've already designed. Could we arrange such a thing? You know, the that that we decide what module D means. You know, the B importing of D. What module that is based on a static module decided by A. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's possible. Um... But in order for you to trigger the synchronous aspect of it, you have to do something like import.sync, something like that. A new, a, new, a new dynamic API, a new dynamic import API that is synchronous, like be import.sync parentheses, then you give the module instance to it. And something like that might, might be analogous to what you will be able to do with the syntax that they're proposing. Okay, but the import dot sync would not uh, uh, would not actually. I mean, this is only solving a problem if the import dot sync does not reintroduce the the uh, reentrancy hazard. So, the um, so the the key thing about the graph here is that. Um, the import dot it's that it's it's basically it's it's in our system at what point do we have to commit and our you know at the at, at the you know at this low level at what point do we have to commit to what module it is that D that the identifier capital D as uttered by B designates. So, 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 so the, the, the important question is, can we do this all synchronously with our current API without introducing um, a, re, a reentrancy hazard? Um, so if there's something like an import.sync, import.sync would have to somehow not introduce a reentrancy hazard, which means it cannot evaluate the thing being imported during the import.sync, which sounds like it well, kind of vi violates the notion of import.sync. So it, it, something like import.sync is not sufficient because you still need to have a sign out that says, get me all these things ready, get and call the import hook and get ready. And that is a, a sync by nature. Ready means ready for evaluation, like linkable. Yeah, and all of the import now variants that we've seen so far proposed are ones where import now will throw an exception if, um, if the 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 graph of things that need to be uh, that needed to be evaluated have not already been loaded synchronous or uh, have not already been loaded previously. Yeah. So, okay. so so I'm, I'm so I'm, I'm assuming that. I'm, so that, that's why I started by asking, we're not trying to avoid loading. So all of the possibilities of what B might, might designate have already been loaded. They must necessarily have already been loaded, yes. Right. So which, mean, so which means that they're, yeah, which means that their virtual module source has to have been arrived at already as well. Right. 
So tell me, so what is import.sync? Somebody talk me through what the semantics of import. No, I, I mean, I mentioned that just like a, a, a potential API that allow you to say that, that was what I was saying yesterday in the meeting that can we have a more generic mechanism? Um, they, they only describe the behavior or they only describe the, the declarative version of these, which is the lazy into the one that um, I think uh, you have in line 14 there, the import boo into B from B in the right hand side. They only describe that one um, as a way to say, I want to go and load the entire tree, but don't evaluate it, keep it there. And only when I access something out of B, go and evaluate that thing. Okay. So we describe but, this thing but, using the right. API. Right, I'm trying to avoid the reentrancy hazard of evaluating it synchronously during something else. So, so yeah, so if if we were to introduce Modable's proposed import now, on like on either on anywhere <laughs> by any name, yeah, import sync and import now is the same thing for me. Yes, exactly. So let's let's assume that import sync is the same as import now. The um, it, the existence of import now would imply that you can already execute another module on the stack, provided that it has already been loaded. Okay, so so import now would violate our reentrancy protection. I think so. Okay, um, so therefore let's let's assume we don't have import now or import sync. Um, Without import now or import sync, with our current low-level module proposal, is it possible to do the scenario that I've I've outlined, where A determines what capital D designates? I don't think so, because okay. you, you will not have a way to trigger D synchronously. Trigger means evaluate. Um, I'm turning off my share. We're on, we're already deep into overtime. And have another topic to get to with uh, with uh, Endo with our next meeting. I want to ask Dan: Did you get any valuable information to right. relay to Yulia? Um, so I, I will pass along that there's concerns about reentry, but I, I think um, we'd be really happy with like a specific, you know, example that that illustrates the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah which we have not yet found. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we'll keep hunting and um, yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to call that assess meeting. Thank you, everyone.